a senior Russian general fired for speaking out against Putin's war. Out front tonight obtaining remarkable audio of a Russian general in command of forces in southern Ukraine, right along that crucial front line near Zaporizhia. The general says he was relieved of duty, fired, because he is now telling the truth about what's really happening on those front lines. Here is General Ivan Popov in a tape meant for the Russian public. I had no right to lie. Therefore, I outlined all the problematic issues that exist today in the army in terms of combat work and support. I called a spade a spade. I drew attention to the most important tragedy of modern warfare. This is the lack of counter-battery combat, the absence of artillery reconnaissance stations, and the mass deaths and injuries of our brothers from enemy artillery. I also raised a number of other problems and expressed it all at the highest level, frankly and extremely harshly. In return, the senior commanders apparently felt some kind of threat in me and quickly, in one light day, concocted an order the Minister of Defense signed the order and got rid of me. Just to, just to give some perspective here, this is a general. General Popov is no ordinary military commander, right? He is, is commanding uh, all of those troops in the South. He is sped to be popular with his troops. He tells them it's an honor to stand with them. He vows to do everything he can to make it easier for them to fight and to come back alive. And then he continued in this audio to accuse Russian leaders, all the way to the top, Russian leaders, of betraying the military. As many commanders of divisional regiments said today, the servicemen of the armed forces of Ukraine could not break through our army from the front. Our senior commander hit us from the rear treacherously and vilely decapitating the army at the most difficult and dense moment. Calling higher command his superiors traitors, accusing them of vilely decapitating their own troops. It is a stunning thing to see because the reality is General Popov and others know what the price could be. He could be out of a job. Sure, he's out of a job. He's fired. But you know what? It could be a lot worse. Things could be a lot worse for him for speaking the truth. We don't know. It can be not ignored that at least one senior Russian military official, General Sergei Surovikin, who was an ally of Yevgeny Prigozhin, the Wagner boss, right, who led the armed rebellion against Putin. Well, General Surovikin hasn't been seen since the attempted coup. And a Russian lawmaker today said Surovikin is, quote, taking a rest. Well, how many more generals, Russian generals, are not buying into Putin's war? It's a crucial question that can affect the outcome of this fight, and it comes as the mystery is deepening over the assassination of a Russian submarine commander. Right now, you're looking at the chilling new video that we have of Stanislav Aritsky jogging just moments before he was gunned down. So you just see him there running. He's shot and killed multiple times seconds later. You can see a, a man in what appears to be a white hat trailing him. Now, it appears that Aritsky's killer could have tracked his movements using the popular running app called Strava. Now, we have obtained here at Outfront posts of Aritsky's two prior runs uh, to this one where he was gunned down and murdered from July 3rd and July 5th, five days before he was killed. And look at the map. Look at the map. Identical. He takes the same route every time. And it was along that very same route that Aritsky was killed. Nick Payton Walsh is following all of these developments and is out front tonight. And Nick, let's begin uh, with the breaking news, this tape that we've obtained of a Russian general fired for speaking out against Putin's war, senior Russian general on those crucial front lines in the south along Zaporizhia. It's hard to overstate how significant this development is. Yeah, certainly. And you've got to put it in the context of the last remarkable three weeks inside Putin's military. We've just had the Wagner Arm Rebellion, a mercenary group, yes, but essentially fueled by very similar complaints about essentially Russia losing the artillery war in key front lines as Ivan Popov was making. Except Popov, a general, is speaking from inside Russia's top brass again about their misconduct and poor execution of this war. And he's spoken out and he's lost his job very fast. Now, this, I think, is another sign of disarray, the disarray which we saw spilling out after the Wagner rebellion. And it comes in a really odd 48 hours for Russia's top brass, where we've seen high profile assassinations deep inside Russia, key commanders killed by missile strikes. And now this extraordinary descent from Popov. Here's what we know. For Russian generals, a home once so distant from the front is no longer safe. 
Here, former Russian submarine commander Stanislav Rzhitsky runs his usual route at the usual time, but with a new, unnoticed companion on a bicycle. Moments later, he was gunned down. Ukrainian defence intelligence said they had nothing to do with it, but they knew a lot about it, saying he had been shot seven times with a Makarov pistol, and heavy rain meant no witnesses. Brzezinski commanded a Russian submarine accused of many attacks on civilians. Ukraine also said, although his family reportedly denied that. Ukraine added later, perhaps sarcastically, that he had been killed by his own men who refused to kill Ukrainian civilians. Russia was quick to respond with their own propaganda, claiming to have captured the gunman within hours. Video we can't verify, but it was a crude bid to show they are in control of the fate of their top brass. After now weeks of chaos, Russian media said the killing hinged on a clumsy detail that Rzhitsky had made his daily run public on the running app Strava, which has a long history of accidentally exposing the location of people who don't want to be found, revealing U.S. military bases in Syria and Yemen five years ago. There are the dead, and also the missing. News Wednesday too about this key Putin lieutenant Sergei Surovikin. Vanished since he appeared early in the armed Wagner rebellion to plead for it to stop. A top Russian lawmaker claimed he was quote resting, whatever that means. Yet more mystery, adding to the bigger one. Where is Russia's most prominent military figure, Wagner rebellion leader Yevgeny Prigozhin? Not seen since the weekend revolt, despite Kremlin claims he met with Putin days later and pledged a sudden reversal and continued allegiance. Dead jogging or still missing, a turbulent time in the top brass. Now, Eric. Aaron, important to add that we've had today from Russian state media confirmation that another key commander, again in the south, Lieutenant General Oleg Sokov, was killed, it seems, by a long-range missile that's been blamed by Russian bloggers, potentially, on British-supplied Storm Shadow missiles. This, again, is another commander, for different reasons, suddenly not in their post, in the most vital part uh, of the area which Russia is defending from Ukraine's continued counter-offensive that's picking up pace. These departures will have a tactical impact, regardless of how fast these people are replaced. Yesterday, the Russian Ministry of Defence put a, a brave face on, saying that Wagner's handed over 2,000 pieces of equipment, tanks, artillery, etc. But really, what we're seeing here is increased dissent spilling out of the public. That's exceptionally rare. It'll damage morale, but most likely it'll damage Russia's performance in the very places they need to fight hardest. Erin?